January 2021 might have been a bit of a slow month for new Nintendo Switch games, but things are quickly ramping up in the month of February, and you're going to be wondering, well, how am I going to be able to afford all of these games? Your wallet is going to be suffering because there are a ton of games, from first-party games to third-party games to indie games, that we need to talk about that need to be on your radar for the month of February. What's going on, guys? I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome! Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Without any further ado, let's talk about the games of February for the Nintendo Switch, and we'll see why your wallet's going to be suffering. Kicking things off on February 4th, we have a game called Blue Fire. Now, this was actually a featured game at a Nintendo Indie World presentation, and I thought this game looked really cool, but then I just sort of forgot about it. It's a highly stylized 3D platformer in which you are doing things like upgrading your character, going on various quests, finding different collectibles, fighting against big creatures, and you have a very interesting traversal system in which you could jump off of walls and things of that nature. I think this game looks really cool. I really like the art style of it as well, and I I think this is going to be sort of a hidden gem on the Nintendo Switch when it comes to indie games. Blue Fire comes out on February 4th and definitely needs to be a game that's on your radar if you're a fan of 3D platforming games. Next up is a game that I had never heard of before until researching for this list, and I actually think it looks pretty cool. It's a game called Grey Skies, A War of the Worlds Story. Now, judging by the title of this game, you could tell that it is based on the H.G. Wells novel, War of the World. Martians are coming, the Earth is in peril, and you're playing as a character named Hunter. And the interesting thing about this game is it's more of a stealth-based style of game rather than just getting big guns and trying to blow away the Martians. I think the visual style of the game looks very nice and clean. It's evident not the greatest game in the world it kind of released to mixed reviews but a lot of people were sort of dogging this game for not being like a triple a game but it's an only $15 game so I'm not quite sure what they were expecting maybe on other platforms it cost a bit more but I think this will be a sort of interesting game for the Nintendo Switch you don't have many of these sort of darker style games that have this sort of storytelling going into it so I'm definitely kind of looking forward to this game and I probably will be checking it out as well gray skies a war of the world story comes out also on on February 4th and if you like what you see in the trailer you might like what the game offers before we get into the next game for the month of February we gotta talk people the internet is a scary scary place and RGT wants you to be protected Surfshark VPN was kind enough to sponsor today's video and they will give you that protection Surfshark VPN is a fast and easy to use VPN service that you can use on a variety of devices. Now I have it on my PC right here and I simply just click a button and bam, now I'm protected online. Beyond just protection when it comes to your IP and your data, you can use the Surfshark VPN to access Netflix from all countries to get exclusive content, overcome location-based price gouging when traveling, and a whole lot more. And right now, by using the link in the description box and the code RGT, you can get Surfshark VPN at an 83% discount, which is the cheapest you could get it anywhere, plus you get three extra months for free. One membership allows you to hook up all your devices to your account, whether it's a mobile phone, a desktop, a laptop, or even your PlayStation or Xbox console. So protect yourself with Surfshark VPN. Check out the link in the description box down below, and thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. On February 12th, we have arguably the biggest game of the month for the Nintendo Switch, and that is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Now, we recently learned about what Bowser's Fury was, and, well, it doesn't really look a whole lot like Super Mario 3D World stuff. Now, if you've never played Super Mario 3D World, this game originally came out on the Wii U and honestly was a fantastic Mario game. It's not necessarily 3D in a game style of, like, Super Mario 64 or Super Mario Odyssey. It has more of an isometric feel to it, but there are some more traditional 3D levels that are sprinkled throughout the game it's a very fun game you can play the game in local or online multiplayer as well but the main draw to me for super mario 3d world is the bowser's fury portion of the game as i played this game pretty heavily back on the wii u the bowser's fury stuff looks more like a super mario odyssey expansion pack than something that would be included in super mario 3d world it's a big open area and i'm really looking forward to seeing just how long of an experience bowser's fury actually offers of course bowser can change how the layout of the level is in terms of weather and sort of the effects going on with it there's a huge mecha bowser battle and i just think this game looks really cool usually i'm sort of on the fence about these nintendo wii u re-releases games like pikmin 3 and tokyo mirage sessions i didn't really care about those donkey kong country tropical freeze just added in funky kong but you're getting a substantial amount of content with this game in the bowser's fury portion stuff Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury comes out on February 12th and is definitely a game I'm picking up. 
I've never really played a Persona game before, but to say that the series hasn't become very popular over the years would be a bit of an understatement. And Persona 5 Strikers is coming to the Nintendo Switch on February 22nd. Now this game takes place six months after the story and Persona 5, but unlike Persona 5, which is more of a traditional JRPG with turn-based elements in it, this is an action-adventure game, more so like a Dynasty Warriors or a Hyrule Warrior style game that's very focused on things like action and big attacks and of course big combat. Combos. I think that may appeal to more people than just the traditional Persona games are concerned because obviously you have to be an RPG fan in order to want to check those out, but I feel like this more open-ended style of combat could bring in some fans of games like action adventure games. I'm honestly much more interested in this game than just a Persona 5 release on the Nintendo Switch because I like this gameplay style a bit more and I think this will be sort of a big hit on the Nintendo Switch as these games seem to do very well. I mean, look at how well Hyrule Warriors has been doing. There is a demo available for this game on the Japanese eShop should you want to check it out. There's lots of Japanese reading and stuff in it, but once you get into the gameplay, it's very pick up and play and a lot of fun. Persona 5 Strikers comes out on February 22nd, and I'm sure if you're a Persona fan, you're already pre-ordering this game. Sometimes a simple phrase can invoke emotions within you, and if I were to sit here and say, yeah, 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 you would know exactly what game I'm talking about. Taxi Chaos is the spiritual successor to Crazy Taxi, which is a series that has been long gone, and really that's unfortunate because Crazy Taxi was super fun, and so I'm really looking forward to Taxi Chaos. The area you're in is a city called New Yellow City, which is stylized to be NYC. I'm sure it's going to be somewhat based on New York City. Of course, you can unlock various cars within the game. You pick people up and you bring them to their destination as fast as possible, trying to find shortcuts within the level to get the most amount of money from these people and get things like time bonuses. The art style of the game looks really good. It's definitely very reminiscent of Crazy Taxi. Obviously, it won't have that traditional offspring song in it, but I mean, you can always pull it up on YouTube. YouTube music or Spotify or whatever you freaking kids use nowadays to listen to your music. Taxi Chaos comes out on February 23rd and low key I'm really looking forward to this game. Lately, we've been seeing a bit of a rise when it comes to old school first person shooter games and Wrath Aeon of Ruin is the next game that's definitely very encompassing of that 90s style first person shooter game. This is a fast but this is a fast-paced first-person shooter game based on the original Quake engine, and you can get various power-ups to your character, so there's a bit of an RPG system in the game as well. You end up getting nine different weapons as you play through the game, and I really like how the game's level system is sort of done, because it's not very traditional for a first-person shooter, especially from this time frame. There's essentially a big hub world, and you could go into levels at your own leisure, and they sort of intertwine together, which I think is a pretty cool thing. There's online gameplay modes, such as Deathmatch as well, and I'm really interested to see how this game performs on the Nintendo Switch. I think the trailer of it looks very cool. Obviously, it looks like a modernized 90s first-person shooter classic, and I think this game could end up being a lot of fun. Wrath Aeon of Ruin comes to the Nintendo Switch on February 25th. Also on February 25th, we have Ghost and Goblins Resurrection. Now, this looks to be an interesting game. It's obviously a bit polarizing within the Ghost and Goblins community because of the art style and the animation style. Me personally, I think it looks fine. I've never been the biggest fan of Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts or anything like that. So I think it works for me, but there are some people who don't really like that art style, but I could definitely understand why. As far as the game is concerned, it looks like it's pretty accurate to the original Ghosts and Goblins style. Stuff, but there are some major differences. Now, aside from the art style being a major difference, Arthur can use his weapons up and down, which is something that was added into later games, and there are multiple difficulties to choose from, which is something new for Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. There's branching paths and new stage hazards and new boss battles as well, so I'm not quite sure if this is like a reimagined version of Ghosts and Goblins or just a more modern version of it, but I do think it looks pretty fun and it looks pretty cool. Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection comes out on February 25th, but if you don't like the art style, you might not like the game. Also on February 25th is a game that we just talked about very recently that has been leaked for the Nintendo Switch, and that is Republic. Now, you've probably never played Republic before, and that is a shame. I played this game on the PlayStation 4 when it first came out. I own a physical copy of it, and I absolutely enjoyed this game. It's a stealth-based game in which you're guiding a character named Hope, who is basically stuck in this 1984 sort of Orwellian dystopian world that's filled with guards and traps. You have to solve puzzles. You have to use things like cameras in order to advance Hope, 
and get her to break out of this area. Now there's no traditional combat in the game or anything like that, but you can get things like pepper spray and tasers along in your journey that will help you take out the guards instead of just having to stealthily avoid them. I really like the story of this game, it was a lot of fun and I don't really remember the story all that much, so I'm definitely going to be playing through Republic again when it comes out on February 25th. On February 26th, Retromania Wrestling finally hits to the Nintendo Switch, and I'm super looking forward to this game. Now, obviously, I have a bit of a bias towards this game, because spoiler alert, I actually make a cameo in it. In the Too Many Games Arena, you could throw someone into the RGT85 table that I'm sitting at, and then the ring will turn into an RGT85 ring, so, like, that's just super cool. This is obviously the successor to WrestleFest, which is the greatest wrestling arcade game of all time, one of my favorite games of all time, and I just really love what they have done with this game. It obviously looks and plays a lot like WrestleFest. You have a variety of wrestlers with characters from AEW, WWE, NWA, Impact Wrestling. Like, it's a great roster of characters. You got the Legion of Doom in there. You got John Morrison, Colt Cabana, Zack Sabre, Jeff Cobb. So many cool people. The BWO with, oh my god, it's Stevie Richards! So, you know, I'm really looking forward to this game. I'm obviously not going to be able to do a standard traditional review of it. We're definitely going to cover it, though, on the channel because this game is going to be so much fun. I can't wait for Retromania Wrestling. It comes out on February 26th, and yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this. And also on February 26th, we have Bravely Default 2. Now, obviously this game is called Bravely Default 2, but it's actually the third game in the Bravely Default franchise. Now, if you've never played any of the other two Bravely Default games, don't worry, because this game features a whole new story and a brand new cast of characters. Now, this game was pretty much known for the Brave Point system, which essentially lets you stack turns for a more powerful attack, which is definitely what this franchise is known for in terms of its traditional RPG turn-based gameplay. The graphics are a very interesting blend of sort of like the original art style of the Bravely Default games along with a bit of Octopath Traveler, so I think this game is going to be a big hit. RPG fans really seem to enjoy the Bravely Default series. I don't think I've ever played the Bravely Default series beyond just the Bravely v Default 2 demo that came out on the Nintendo Switch, and yes, there's a demo, so you can check it out to see if this is your style of game. Bravely Default 2 comes out on February 26th, and RPG fans are probably going to want to have this game on their radar. Before we wrap things up, there is one more game that is allegedly coming out on February 2nd, but we don't have a full-on confirmation of it yet, and that is Apex Legends. Now, this game, of course, is a free-to-play first-person shooter that released on the PS4, the Xbox One, and PC to much fanfare. People seem to really enjoy this game. I actually played it a bit on the Xbox One. I had some fun with it. I never got super deep into it, though, but I'm definitely interested to see how the Nintendo Switch version of this game performs in terms of things like graphics and the frame rate. It's a pretty pretty-looking game pretty pretty and of course the fact that this is a free-to-play game makes it very easy for people to want to get into this style of game and I think that free-to-play games on the Nintendo Switch are good things like it's fun to have these free-to-play experiences and Apex Legends is going to be yet another great free-to-play experience on the Nintendo Switch like I said it looks like it's coming out on February 2nd but since it has not been officially confirmed yet I'm throwing it at the end of this video all right, so those are the games of February of 2021 for the Nintendo Switch. I think we can all agree that, yes, this month is a bit better than January was. January, you know, I was kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel when it came to games, but a lot of these games look like awesome experiences. We've got a great variety of AAA third-party games, first-party games, indie games. There's definitely something for everyone in the month of February. So let me know in the comments section down below what games you plan on picking up in the month of February for your Nintendo Switch. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. I want to give a huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys check out the link in the description box down below. Use the code RGT and get 83% off the standard price of Surfshark VPN along with three free months to protect yourself on the internet. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.